And we're back. Uh, the Nigeria Police Force in Edo State yesterday confirmed that several passengers were abducted from the Ekehen train station. Uh, this is located in the Gweben local government area of that state. Uh, Chidi Nwabuzo is the public relations officer of the Nigeria Police Force Edo State Command. He confirmed the incident uh, in a statement on Saturday uh, saying the travelers were waiting to board a train from the Ibuegben station uh, in Ibuegben local government area or the Ekehen station rather in Ibuegben local government area of Edo State um, to worry the capital or sorry worry the commercial nerve center of Delta State when they were uh, kidnapped by the suspected headsmen on Saturday evening. Quite a very sad one. Um, Wabuz also said the abductors stormed the train station with AK-47 rifles and shot sporadically into the air before whisking away 32 passengers uh, into the bush. Right, it happened for some time. Yesterday, the Edo State Commissioner for Communication and Orientation, uh, Chris Nekari, uh, had said the security operatives arrested one of the suspected kidnappers uh, and that one of the 32 persons abducted had managed to escape to safety. The Nigeria Railway Corporation and Related Development uh, came out to dismiss reports uh, of the suspension of train services on the Itakwe Wari axis following the attack on the Kehen train station in Igwebin local government area of Edo State. We have joining us uh, to do justice to this with analysis, Nika Gule, who is a public affairs analyst. He joins us live. Uh, via Zoom. Nick, very good to have you this morning, albeit in very sad uh, uh, circumstances. What's your reaction to, to this new attack on a, a train station in Nigeria? Uh, we can say yet again, yet again, are you surprised that uh, these gunmen, these terrorists or headsmen, whatever you want to call it, are able to do this again? A bit similar to what happened in Kaduna State. Uh, thank you very much, and good morning to our viewers. My reaction is rightly like you have said, not again, but I am also not surprised that it has happened. Because since Nigeria has been visited with these kidnap scenarios, the government has not done anything to stop further kidnappings. And if nothing has been done to stop further kidnappings, it is only a matter of when next and who next that we're talking about. Recall that about a year ago, precisely on my birthday, the 28th of March, what a sad birthday gift I got. Scores of passengers were kidnapped on a Kaduna-bound train that departed from Abuja. What did the government do? The government did not react like governments elsewhere will do. Government did not go after the kidnappers. Instead, the kidnappers were trading Nigerians for money. And if I recall, at a hundred naira bounty per head, I say 100 naira, 100 million naira, the kidnappers were at liberty to trade the Nigerians they had taken hostage. 100 million naira per head. The kidnappers had the temerity to even invite medical personnel to deliver a pregnant woman of her baby. These kidnappers were feeding. That means they had supply chains to supply them food, supply them water, supply them arms on the territory of Nigeria. And the Nigerian government did nothing about it. These guys traded these Nigerians successfully. If that is what happened on the Kaduna bound train, what will stop other people from kidnapping? Because kidnapping has become a lucrative and almost riskless business in Nigeria. Elsewhere, if you take citizens hostage, you will see the full force of the government. The government will react swiftly and surround the entire geographic space 
where the kidnap has happened. And the security agencies will remain there until the kidnap is resolved, either by the kidnappers surrendering themselves and their hostages, or they getting killed and the hostages released. That is what you will see elsewhere. If you go to any of the, the democracies around the world and you take citizens hostage, we see it play out on TV. The government will be there in helicopters. It will be there with uh, sharp shooters. It will be there with uh, ground forces. It will be there with naval forces, with air assault, anything that they can put into this. And we will see it live on TV as these operations will take place until the kidnappers are either arrested or killed. That makes kidnapping bad business, but not in Nigeria. So as it happened in Kaduna, and it has now happened in Edo State, the question is, where next? Oh. And who is the next victim? Oh, right. That's my summation of this news item. I'm sure you will never forget the 28th of March, uh, 2022. Um, of course, you said it was your birthday. Very sad day. Um, and indeed, you've done justice by going to the history, what happened in the last train attack in, in the country. Um, uh, in your opinion, why Edo State? Because, uh, I mean, if you want to talk about such incidents, the, the, the states or the part of the country that easily comes to mind would be the northern part of Nigeria. We saw that in Kaduna State. We've seen abductions in the Middle Belt, for instance, in Plateau State recently. Um, so why, why, why Edo State? Edo State is, a, is, is not the first, second, or third, or even fifth state to come to mind uh, when we think of such attacks. So why do you think that this is happening in Edo State? Um, would you say it's part of the trend we've been seeing of terrorism? Because we hear, according to the police spokesman in Edo State, he's saying that they identified as herdsmen. Nika Gule. It's very difficult to say why Edo State. Incidentally, I have a very long relationship with Edo State because I went to the University of Benin and after I graduated, I was retained as a graduate assistant. So I was a university teacher for another five years. So for about like 10 years, I lived in Benin. So it's a state that I, I, I very much love. And in fact, if Nigeria were the kind of place where we are not dealing with this state of origin thing, I could consider myself to be an Edo indigent. Uh, so why Edo state? I, I don't have answers to that, but I know that Given the way the security situation in Nigeria has deteriorated, like you rightly said, insecurity was prevalent in the northern part of the country. It has gradually escalated to other states in the middle belt and is now actually happening to states in the south. And that is because the government of Nigeria has lost the game to, the, to, to these perpetrators. The government of Nigeria is not up to it. The government seems to be clueless. The government doesn't, anytime I see like the chief of defense staff come on TV to be making press conferences, I feel pity for him because I look at the chief of defense staff who has allowed the game to be controlled by terrorists, bandits, and kidnappers. I see a chief of defense staff who cannot protect his citizens. I see a chief of defense staff who I don't know what his uh, challenges are. Could it be uh, the, the equipment, the men, or money? But you expect a reaction different from a, another chief of defense staff elsewhere. As in, like, if, check for instance, in, in the United Kingdom, where I live, that citizens have been taken hostage, the reaction you receive from the, the security forces is going to be different. From what you see in Nigeria. And so because Nigerian security architecture is not actually going after those who are terrorizing citizens or carrying out acts of banditry or kidnapping citizens, then uh, the entire country has become a, a fertile ground for these acts of criminality. And if it has happened in those states here, it can happen in any other state. So I would think that uh, given that it happened in Edo State, why Edo State is because it can be any state actually in Nigeria. Uh, these passengers were standing at a, uh, at a train station waiting
to be lifted by a train, and then these guys just came there and kidnapped them. As, in, as we speak today in Nigeria, the kidnappers can actually kidnap anybody anywhere in Nigeria as of today, and you are not going to see the reaction that is needed from the security agencies. Mm. Indeed, Nick, uh, uh, kidnapping is not a strange phenomenon in the southern part of the country. I mean, for some time now, we've had uh, kidnapping in the southeast, but it became an epidemic between the southeast, parts of the southeast and the south south, especially river states. So somewhere between uh, Port Harcourt and, uh, um, uh, 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 and uh, Oweri, yeah, was, was a hotbed, you know. But when you look at these terrorism-style kidnappings and you hear headsmen uh, by the police, and um, what comes to mind? Uh, do you think this different? Is it similar in your opinion to? Uh, is it linked to insecurity and the crisis in the northern part of the country, of which headsmen have played a prominent role? Um, are we beginning to see a trickling down of uh, the security crisis and the uh, situation in the northern part of the country into the southern part of the country? To mean that what we are seeing as security threat in Nigeria South is no longer just the kidnapping we know you know, from our brothers and sisters here, or the so-called unknown gunmen who are civil from this part of the country, but we're beginning to see an expansion of the terrorism-related, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, insecurity in the northern part of the country, when you hear headsmen are behind this. Because if you look at, at Edo State, it's surrounded by Kogi State, Ondo State, Delta State, and Anambra State. And to move from Kaduna to Edo State, you have to go through the FCT, and you have to go to Kogi State. So should we begin to assume that what's been happening up north is now down south, or is this just more of what we've been seeing in the south in previous years? Since the advent of the current administration, we have seen the trickling down of the insecurity in the country. Because in 2015, when the government, this current government came into power, the insecurity was prevalent in the northeast. And they promised, one of the electoral promises was that they were going to deal with that. Now, they came into office in 2015, and immediately we started seeing the trickling down from the northeast to the north central to the northwest, southwest, then southeast, and now in the south south. So you can see that over the past eight years, what was the challenge that we had in the Northeast has not developed and covered the entire nation. So this is what we have been seeing. And like we have been saying now, there is no gain staying again to say we are going to advise President Buhari, because if there is anything President Buhari should have done, he should have done it in the past eight years. But he hasn't done it. So our attention is actually now gradually turning to whoever is going to succeed him in the next couple of months, precisely on May the 29th. And we are telling this person that once they come into office, fighting insecurity should be their number one agenda. Because a country that is not secure is not going to develop. Because the much talked about foreign direct investment and all of that that we talk about is not going to happen. If there is a sense of insecurity, you know, I tell people that if you go to a place like Johannesburg, you will discover that you stand a greater chance of getting a knife stuck in your back in Johannesburg than it is in Lagos or in Abuja. But you will see tourists flocking to Johannesburg on holiday, and they are not coming to Nigeria. Why? It's because Nigeria's security architecture is not formed to prevent these attacks. Because security is in two ways. Number one, intelligence-less security should stop you from having this incidents in the first place. And then the second layer is that in case the incidents happen, then your reaction to that should be so swift and final that the, the, the people who perpetrate these things who advise themselves. What? Um, so, yes, go on. We, we can hear you, Nick. Yes. All right. Apologies for that. Uh... Uh, Nick, go on. It, it's quite clear. The connection is, is okay, and uh, we, can, we can hear you clearly. I, I, I was just trying to sort things yeah. out. Yeah, it's okay. So, so uh, like I was saying, insecurity is in two layers. I mean, fighting security is in two layers. Or securing the nation is in two layers. 
Layer one, layer one is when you prevent the insecurity from happening in the first place. And then layer two is if it happens, then you are going to fight it. In Nigeria, neither is happening. We needed to prevent this Edo kidnapping from happening. We needed to prevent Kaduna kidnapping from happening. We needed to prevent every other kidnapping, banditry, and terrorism in Nigeria from happening. But in case it happens, our reaction to that should be swift, so swift that the perpetrators should be given little chance to get away with their crime. Both are not happening. And because of that, that feeling, that sense of insecurity in Nigeria, we're not going to see tourists come here. We're not going to see uh, foreign direct investment come here. So let me tell you things. There are very simple and easy ways we can actually set up security in Nigeria. Number one, Nigeria is perhaps the only nation, the only nation with this kind of size of population that does not have an emergency number an emergency number like a 999 or a 911, where citizens can swiftly call the security architecture, the security agents' attention to an, an incident. When you have such a, 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 a when you don't have such an emergency uh, number system, you have given all the citizens security responsibility because if they see something that is fishy, they will just call you. And once they call you, you respond to it. Nigeria does not have, even have something as simple as that. As simple as that. So how can we find security when we have not put the architecture in, in place? And year in, year out, we continue to get, we continue to allocate the highest budget to security in Nigeria. And yet the insecurity is increasing. Has anybody been held responsible? Like for instance now, this train kidnap that has happened in Edo State, assuming the commissioner of police in Edo State has been today suspended from work and somebody has brought in. If all commissioners of police in Nigeria realize that, look, if insecurity is perpetrated in my domain, the government is going to suspend me and I'll probably, probably lose my job. You, you know that they are going to be more serious with their work. But Nobody is going after anybody. We're not going after the, the, the perpetrators. We're not going after those who should have stopped them or gone after them in the first place. And therefore, it is just a question of who next and where next, All right. unfortunately. Uh, Nick, give us a minute or two. Uh, we have uh, some, uh, uh, some content to play. Uh, we'll just go listen to an excerpt. Uh, we'll look at that. Uh, um, all right. Anyway, I'm told, I'm told we can we can keep on going with the conversation, so that's fine. Um, um, Nick, um, so so, I mean, we remember what uh, Amechi said when he was Minister of Transportation, talking about a proposal to secure Nigeria's rail tracks and very importantly the rail infrastructure in the country. Um, I mean, billions or trillions of naira in loans, you know, taken to ensure that this rail infrastructure in the country is. Um, Put up and set up and put a right. I mean, this this is uh, part of the Wari Takpe uh, rail corridor. Um, what do you think is responsible for the fact that last year there was an attack on a train? People were abducted. We know what happened. Till now, we've not seen security beefed up at the train stations all across the country. There are not too many, and on the, on the tracks across the country, there are not too many to ensure that at least we learn from history to ensure that it does not repeat itself and it has repeated itself. Why have we not seen the government of the day do the few things that Michi said, or at least do the little they can to ensure that there's security, adequate security at our train stations and on our rail infrastructure in the country, which we borrowed for and which we are yet to pay for? Well, it is very difficult to understand why the government has been unable to tackle head on the insecurity in Nigeria. Because uh, I supported President Buhari in 2015, and the reason I did that was because I saw in him as an ex-general 
the what it takes to deal with insecurity in Nigeria. But unfortunately, that has not materialized. Uh, President Buhari has, it seems to have been bereft of ideas on how he's going to tackle insecurity. Uh, for a long time, he was in office. Uh, insecurity was escalating from the Northeast, which he inherited, uh, to the Northwest, North Central, down to the South. And uh, all we could hear was that uh, the president condemns the kidnap of citizens. The president condemns the kidnap of uh, school children. The president condemns uh, the, the, the terrorist action against Nigerians. We were only seeing these press statements that were being issued by the, the presidential spokesman. Even the president himself will not address the nation about the efforts that he's putting in to tackle the insecurity that we are facing. And this thing continued to escalate. The, the people he had in charge, the security chiefs, he, he had to take Nigerians a lot of work to tell the president that these people have overstayed their welcome, that they need to be removed. And when he removed them, and the insecurity continued, I mean, in one of his interviews, he said, look, um, I don't know what to do again because uh, Nigerians wanted me to to remove the service chiefs, I have removed them, so what next? So we were now confronted with a president, even though uh, a, a, a former general who should understand how to deal with insecurity, running the country without uh, the necessary action that we were supposed So here we are, almost eight years later, and the uh, things that we're not hearing before, because uh, by 2015, we used to know about the Boko Haram activities in the Northeast, and then some bomb bombings uh, that were happening in places like Abuja. Now, that has now escalated to routine kidnap of citizens. It has escalated to uh, a total breakdown of uh, law and order like in the Southeast. And now we are seeing uh, kidnap in places like experience is on fair share of insecurity. I mean, we are not forgetting the old war uh, massacre where, you know, government came from nowhere. And so all over the nation now we are having these cases of insecurity with a man who promised to secure the nation as one of the tripod of uh, the economy and then the other being corruption. And uh, if we have to uh, run the scorecard of President Buhari uh, as far as security is concerned. Agreeable by a lot of Nigerians will be that he has done very poorly. Hmm. Indeed, if I must be fair, uh, um, you know, on, on, the, on the resumed Abuja Kaduna train service, um, uh, we know that so we've heard that there are security operatives manning these trains, you know, some of the passengers have reported seeing these security operatives, you know, walking to and fro while the train has been in motion and all of that. But, you know, uh, still we've seen that the stations themselves are being attacked. Maybe we can say, assume that the focus is on the Abuja Kaduna train and the stations up north. Um, one would have thought that they would secure not just the trucks, but the stations all over the country. Um, 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 and, Ame and Amechi did say something about the time, you know, that there was a proposal and it had been rebuffed and there was some sort of disagreement within uh, the corridors of power in the country about that. We also heard that there were um, security reports, intelligence reports um, that were sent to the army and they did nothing about this. Um, do you think that, that there is a political will and even a will from maybe the security apparatus in the country to address the situation we have at hand? Or has Nigeria's security been compromised from within the apparatus, the security apparatus, the power you know, structure in the country? I, I thank you very much for that question. I think it's a combination of all that you have stated. Uh, there's lack of political will, there's lack of political courage, as you can see in this, uh, 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 acts of uh, in, in terms of government's response to these acts of uh, insecurity. There's also uh, the challenge of 
uh, having a fifth columnist within the security ranks. It is something that the government itself has uh, owned up to, that uh, there are people within the security architecture who are either collaborating or even uh, supplying arms or in, in giving away intelligence and things like that. But you see, that is the job of the government. The government job has been cut out for it. To deal with these matters, who within the security architecture has been arrested, prosecuted, and jailed, no matter how high-ranking in all this? It's not just for the government to come out and tell us that they know that there are people within the security architecture who are collaborating with these uh, terrorist bandits and kidnappers and all sorts of criminals. It is for the government to take the next step. Have we seen a general? Have we seen uh, is a head of security agency? Have we seen someone senior in government who has been picked up, prosecuted, and jailed because they were collaborating with these people? The answer is no. And if that, if that doesn't happen, how, how then are we going to stop it? What is going to be the deterrence to others not to do this? You know? And also, I mean, uh, it's a difficult job for President Buhari uh, to explain why the security architecture in Nigeria deals ruthlessly with the likes of IPOP or uh, Southwest uh, 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 bandits and all that. But uh, towards the other eye, if it is uh, the, the Northern uh, uh, Fulani Hesmen who are perpetrating insecurity, you, won't, you, you don't see the kind of sweet reaction that you see. You know, I, I'm speaking to you here now. I'm speaking to you in, in Makodi in Benue State. And I, I, I think it was last year or two years ago, there were a, a community in Benue here that was alleged to have seized some army personnel and murdered them. A very bad thing for anybody to have done. The government reacted swiftly with helicopter gunships with troops on the ground, they went and they leveled the communities within that horizon, totally leveled them. Okay. okay. We're not seeing that when it but, is. But, but, but Nick, we, we hear that, that there is. That yeah. That. Yeah, Nick, we hear there is a, a security sweep uh, and the security are spreading their net to try and rescue these um, uh, 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 abducted persons. We've seen the video, as you saw. Well, we played um, the deputy governor of Edo State visited the site. He was accompanied by the state's commissioner of police. And uh, the police, in partnership with uh, local vigilante and uh, local farmers, uh, combing the bush in the area, the bushes in the area, to try and see how they can um, you know, uh, free these persons and release them and get them back uh, to their families. Are, are you, finally, final question, because they're out of time. Are you, uh, do you feel confident, do you feel positive that with what we're seeing of a sort of a reaction by the police in Edo State, maybe we might see this, these uh, uh, individuals being released, uh, being uh, rescued rather, as quickly as possible. Uh, well, uh, we usually see this kind of thing when the insecurity has already happened. In the Kaduna uh, case, we saw the chief of defense staff go there. We saw the chief of army staff go there. We saw, you know, all the people, minister of uh, transportation uh, went there. We saw all these things. So whether this thing is done for the cameras or it is actually concrete action that is being taken by the government to fight this insecurity, it's only uh, the next few days that is going to tell. And my hope and wish is that this should not be for the camera. At least for once, let us get it right where these efforts, as we are seeing on these video clips, will lead to the eventual arrest or killing of the kidnappers, depending on their choice, their own choice, and the release of the hostages. So it's only the next few days that is going to tell us if there's something different from this Edo case in terms of security reaction and from the Kaduna case. All right, Diga Gole, we want to thank you very much for your time. And uh, once again, Happy New Year to you. We do hope for uh, a positive outcome this time as far as the rescue efforts are concerned. It's really a traumatizing one. Uh, Nick Agule has been a guest this morning on a first uh, topic, a first conversation right here on The Breakfast. Uh, Nick, have a fantastic day. Uh, thank you very much. And my, my message to viewers always is that 
Elections is next month. The presidential elections is actually <laughs> on the 25th of February. Please go and get your voters' cards. All right. I know yeah. that INEC has not made it easy because voters' cards are not where you are living. They are where you are going to vote. But please, make the sacrifice. Go and get it. And if you have not registered to vote, still mobilize people to go get their voters' cards and also to come out to vote. All because right. it is only when we have competent leaders in office that this security will disappear from Nigeria. Thank, Thank you. you, Nick. Have a wonderful day. We're still and ahead. Nick, Thank you very much, Nick. Still ahead on the program. Uh, the, uh, Non-government organization Serap is asking the federal government, in particular President Buhari, to reverse the increase, recent increase in electricity tariffs in the country. We'll look at that when we come back. Please stay with us.